Me and Jake running down the street with a handful of comic books kicking ass and yeah. banging chicks and drinking beer. No, not and me. Smoking I'm, not weed. me. I'm, married. Oh, yeah, well, I'm married. Jake. I do that. Yeah. <laughs> off panel, off top of with Jake and Tyler. What's up, everybody, and welcome to a very special. I would say episode 17, but let's be honest, it's kind of like episode 16.5 of Off Panel, Off Topic. This is a solo show uh, because Tyler, what I'm going to be talking about, and you've seen the title of this episode, this is going to be all about Halloween Kills because I saw it over the weekend and I have my thoughts (laughs) Uh, just like I think everybody has their opinions of it. You know, this movie is uh, very polarizing, I've noticed, if you if you look online. And I'm not just talking about critics. Uh, the, the, a lot of fans are uh, kind of mixed about it. I uh, have a very interesting perspective on it. I don't think it's probably the mainstream perspective, you know, uh, air quotes. But yes, this is just going to be me, this episode. This isn't necessarily going to be, I don't, I mean, I love to talk, but I don't know if I could ramble just myself for... Uh, an hour or so, so we'll see how long this is. But I and my wife uh, saw Halloween Kills over the weekend. We saw it on a Sunday matinee, which I, I that's how I saw Venom with Tyler. Uh, I think that's the best way to view a movie. I'm serious. Get those Sunday matinees. Uh, we saw this around lunchtime, so if you can go to the, the theater that we did, you can go in like a nice uh, dine and recline theater. And uh, we went to the Palms here in Waukee. Iowa, um, so yeah. By the way, we're from Des Moines. If you guys didn't know that, <laughs> uh, I I would recommend viewing a movie that way because you get out, you still you know you go to the movie for a couple hours, and you still have the rest of your Sunday. You can go watch some football. You can you know go do some tours around the house, things like that. You still have your weekend ahead of you. Now that look, I've always been the guy that used to be the one that I had to see it the Thursday night, or I would have to see it the 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 Friday night of the opening thing. As I've gotten older, I've just accepted that, you know, I'll see a damn movie when I want to see a movie. Right? So, uh without that without you know, well we're done going on that diatribe. I thought I said, hey, maybe I might be able to do an hour and here I am riffing about <laughs> when to see a a movie. But yes, we saw it yesterday. If you're listening to this when this comes out on Monday, but uh, we watched it on a Sunday uh lunchtime movie we watched it around noon and uh i actually am going to probably be in the minority here because i've seen you know if you go based on rotten tomatoes this movie has a 39 percent which is a huge drop off from the first movie because critics love the first movie i actually don't know the rotten tomatoes on uh, halloween 2018 i'll actually uh pull that up here but you know it's it's an interesting beast because i had high expectations coming into this because yeah I I really enjoyed uh the f- the the sequel reboot because you know we're in the phase now uh where we have sequel reboots so yeah the first Halloween has uh 2018's Halloween had a 79 percent on Rotten Tomatoes uh so this one has a lot lower this one has a 39 percent Halloween kills. So uh, it is a huge drop off. Same director too. You know, usually when you see a drop off like that, it's a different writing team, it's a different director, whatever the case may be. And this is the same team that made the 2018 reboot that's working on this like reboot trilogy. So yeah, it's from 79 to 39, huge 40% drop off on Rotten Tomatoes. Uh but yeah, so with with the Halloween 2018 I came in with a lot of expectations because, uh, you know, I kind of, <laughs> it's hard to explain. I had like a renaissance of, of falling back into love with horror movies because there had been a period, like, I growing up, I'd watched a lot of horror movies and it's it's not my preferred genre. I prefer to watch comedies and, and action and, you know, superhero movies, hence this fucking podcast <laughs> where all we do is mostly talk about superheroes and comic books, but, um... So I I didn't have going into Halloween 2018. I was excited to see it because I'm not a huge fan of the Halloween franchise. Um, I had seen the original from 1978, 
And I think I saw, I, I, I and I dabbled here, you know, I'd, I'd heard about Halloween 3 because that is, I got a cult following because of how bad it is. There's like tons of podcasts about it and everything like that. And so I didn't have a huge attachment to the series. So uh, if I'm being totally honest, I watched, I, I didn't watch most of the series, but I watched, um, I watched this YouTube channel, Dead Meat, and he did the whole Halloween franchise for his kill count. Uh, series and that's how I watch most of them. Now, if I'm being honest, don't just watch those videos to watch the movie. Well, as he says, watch the whole movie and form your own opinion. But he does a great job of recapping those movies because with Halloween Kills, that that is the twelfth movie of this franchise, and I'm sorry, but I don't want to sit through twelve fucking movies. I'm sorry, I don't care what franchise it is. Well, that's not true. I'd probably sit through 12 MCU movies. I have sat through 12 MCU movies. But 12 shitty movies, I should say. Because Halloween is hit or miss. You get the first one as uh, as a classic. Halloween 2 is all right. Halloween 3 is a cult classic just because it's fucking absurd. Uh, 4 gets a lot of uh, credit. But then after that, like 5 and 6. And 6 brought in the whole cult thing. And then you had H2O. And then you had Resurrection. It's like, I don't want to watch those movies. Okay? So I don't. I know coming into Halloween 2018 and then coming into Halloween Kills that I may not have the same perspective of someone that's a Halloween mega fan. And I and I you know I have a good friend who uh, it, she is a big Halloween mega fan, so I'd, I'd love to hear her opinion once she sees this movie. But yeah, so going in, I, I loved Halloween 2018. I thought it was really great way to and and it, it kind of started a trend because terminated it is too but i love that it, it kind of took the idea of like okay let's just ignore all those shitty sequels and let's just say this is a direct sequel to john carpenter's original movie and then build off that and i loved that approach and halloween 2018 like i said i i enjoyed it a lot i had to think it had it was genuinely pretty scary there's some really good kills and it was funny and uh it, it you know it was not what I was expecting from David Gordon Green because David Gordon Green had started his career in comedy so this was a big shift for him to do something you know a slasher flick and you can still see his comedy roots in it but yeah this is one hundred percent straight up horror movie slasher movie and I think that hurts this movie I think that hurts Halloween Kills because Halloween Kills doesn't have a lot of humor in it like Halloween Kills is a very violent, gruesome, grim movie, <laughs> you know? And it, it, it when I say that, you kind of, you, you know, some people might have a little bit of a, like, ooh, I don't know. Because, you know, when you go in to see a flasher, uh, slasher flick, you want it to be dumb and silly. You want characters that you don't really care about because you're going to watch them get murdered in a super gruesome way and it's going to be ridiculous and over the top and entertaining. And I get that. That's why I fucking love slasher movies, man. I love Friday the 13th. I love... You know, Nightmare on Elm Street and all those, you know, all the slasher flicks. I love them because of that. But with Halloween 2018, it was an attempt to be a little bit more serious. And this movie straight up is full serious. Like, there are, I think, a few jokes peppered in here and there and a little bit of light-hearted moments. But other than that, this is a this is a straightforward sequel that is just like... And, it, you know, it, it, it to me... Halloween was like, okay, Halloween 2018 was like, all right, he, hey, we're going to forget about the, those other movies, the straight up sequel to John Carpenter's original, and we're going to have a little bit of fun with it, but it's going to be gruesome, and it's going to be nasty. And this movie is the same thing, but it's like, okay, we're doubling down on what we did, and we're going to make it even more, like, some of these kills are fucking unreal. Like, they're so good, and I'm surprised that they got away with some of the stuff they did. And and I see the criticisms online. I think I think most of the criticisms online for this movie are because this movie has not as much substance as that first movie did. That first movie, you know, it, it did. It, I feel like there was a lot of focus on. <clears throat> excuse me, I have to clear my throat. A lot of focus on building up Lori as this like Sarah Connor esque. She has a fucking compound. She's got all these guns. Like, she knows at some point Michael Myers is going to come back and she's going to kill him. She knows that, she, he, you know, he wants him or wants her. And, you know, in, in this movie, and, and what I love about 
this version of Halloween, this new trilogy, as far as we know, because I don't know how they're going to do this in the third movie, but as far as we know, it also wipes away that idea that uh, Michael is her brother. It's simply, she just got away and he wants to kill her. That's really all it is. And I I love how they modernized it. And in this movie, I can understand how people don't feel like there was enough substance there. And how Laurie was underutilized. Because let's be honest, Jamie Lee Curtis literally shows up in this movie to be in a fucking hospital bed for most of it. Then she gets out of the hospital bed, does a little bit of stuff, and then does a monologue and the movie's over. Like, like she really has nothing going on. And, and Now, I understand how people are upset because ha- the new Halloween, was, like this whole new trilogy, you had this idea with the first movie, this is all going to be about Lori being a fucking badass and taking out Michael. And that's what I think what they tried to do with the first movie. But this movie, if you go in thinking that this movie is about Michael, because this movie straight up is about Michael Myers. Now, they might throw... And by the way, this is going to have... Uh, you guys don't know how we do uh, reviews. There's going to be spoilers in this. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm still going to be vague here. I'll let you know when I dive into sto- just <laughs> this spoiler territory. And I know this is a longer version of my spoiler three, uh, spoiler free thoughts, but you know, there's only me, so I got to do. <laughs> it's a solo show, so fuck you. I'll do how I want to. I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Please listen, like, subscribe, all that shit. Uh, <laughs> um. This movie is a is a Michael Myers movie. It you can you can bring in other characters, you can have a different storyline, do different things, but we all know that this this movie is a Michael Myers movie. And if you go in with that expectation, I think, if you go in understanding that this is a and, and I hate when movies do this and this movie does this and we'll get to that. But uh what I'm talking about. Uh but this is it is a Michael Myers revenge movie. Because now he's even more pissed because Lori actually fought back. Lori actually th- thought she killed him and, and set that all up. So now he's even more angry. This is a much more... And that's why I think the kills are much more vicious and, and malicious is because this is a pissed off Michael Myers. And this is a movie about him rampaging through town. Another thing that I like, spoiler free, you know, because it's, it's, I mean, it's pretty obvious. I mean, it's, it's, it, they've already announced it's a trilogy. But what I love about this, spoiler free, is that this movie picks up right where the first one left off. So I would recommend watching Halloween 2018, then watching this back to back because it works so much more effectively. And I and I like how they did this because they'll probably and I I don't know if they're filming yet, but I know the plan was the Halloween reboot was going to come out, and then la- in 2020. Halloween Kills was going to come out, and then Halloween Ends was going to come out in 2021. Obviously, those dates shifted because of COVID. So I don't know if they've started filming Halloween Ends, because I thought they would film them back-to-back, but I don't know if they have. I I saw a little bit of an interview with uh, David Gordon Green, uh, which, by the way, people are calling this the DGG trilogy. Uh, I saw a little bit of an interview that he said he was still writing, and you know they're constantly writing the script, so I don't know, and and I know if that would be news if they said they started production on the third movie. So they, I, I don't think they have. But what I, that's what I love about this, is that it is really told in a way that it is a trilogy and you need to see all three movies because this movie starts where the first one left off. It literally starts with a character leaving the Halloween dance that was in the first movie, which I think was really cool. And I, and I like that a lot. And if, if, if anybody says, like, well, what if you want to go in fresh and not seeing this? Why the fuck would you? Why would you go see the second movie of a trilogy without seeing the first one? Ugh. Well, technically it's a quadrilogy because it's it's Halloween 1978, Halloween 2018, Halloween Kills, Halloween Ends. Yeah. Which, by the way, can we stop doing that? If it's a reboot, don't just give me the name of the movie. Think of a new way because I hate saying the title and then the year it comes out. It's weird. I hate it. But, you know, you have to do it for confusion. Um, so I, I, I do love that this movie really does that. And it, it says, okay, this is what... And, and even though our timeline, it's... And this was supposed to come out in 2020, but in our timeline, it's 2021. It's still Halloween night 2018. So this is still happening within... Like, the second movie picks up within hours of the first movie. 
And I think that's really cool, and I love that a lot, and I really like that they're really playing up the fact that this is happening in a condensed period of time. Now, I did see in an interview that DGG... <laughs> I hate that, but I, you know, I hate that when you have free names, that's how we do it as initials, but it helps me too. So uh, I saw that he said that there is going to be a time jump in Halloween Ends, I think at the beginning. So, and they and they kind of did a little, they did some of that with this movie, and and I'm interested to see how they're going to do that because of how condensed this these two these first two films feel. I'm wondering how they're going to do that. So uh, before I get to spoilers, my my thoughts. Um, Completely spoiler free. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was a. I thought it was a good movie. I thought it was fun. Again, I know I'm in the minority here, but um, it did. Yes, there were times when it was a little predictable, but I think the kills were very creative and over the top and just gruesome. Uh, I liked the backstory of the town and how how we get involved with how the town is responding forty years later and how they do respond in this movie. And uh, I'll talk more about that in spoilers. And, um, yeah, I, I, you know, honestly, I like Anthony Michael Hall. He does a great job of being someone that you don't, you, you start to like, and then slowly we're like, yeah, he's kind of a piece of shit. I like him and I, I like the characters. I just, I, I understand the criticisms that this movie doesn't feel complete because there's a third movie and the way that this movie ends is a gigantic cliffhanger for the third movie, and I understand that. But those, but I, and and I get that, and I I understand that. But honestly, I enjoyed it. I just I don't hate it as much as other people might hate it. Now, do the is there some messaging in the movie that it, that could be looked at as a little on the nose or overbearing? Absolutely, I do, th- and I I will get into that in spoilers. Actually, no, I can talk about it now. That's spoilers. The, their whole mild mentality storyline that's in this, I get what they're trying to go for, and I understand it. And it, I think they're right in, in, in the context of what they're trying to say. I don't know. I, I'm going back and forth on it. But I, I do understand how people could feel it was ridiculous part of the movie. I can understand that 100%. And I totally understand that. Now, Let's get into spoilers. So you've been warned. I'm going to count down from three, one, spo- three, two, one, spoiler. When I say that, we're in spoilers, all right? Ready? Three, two, one, spoilers. R.I.P. Karen. <laughs> I was very, very surprised at the ending of this movie. Not, okay, I'm, uh, all right, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little facetious. I was surprised that they d- went this route because I really thought... Because, you know, you look at the first movie, it was all about the Strode women. It was about Lori, it was about Karen, and it was about Karen's daughter, who I can't think of the character's name. And I apologize to, to uh, Halloween fans out there. But it, it, it built them up so much and made them so important and such good characters that I was rooting for them by the end of that first movie. Now that being said, it does seem like, and, and again, it, maybe it is because we you had to t- you had to expect you had to change your expectations and understand what this movie was going to be. With this being a Michael Myers movie, they all kind of take the back seat, and I can understand how people wouldn't like that because I, I was a, I was a little bummed by that. Not that Jamie Lee Curtis didn't have much to do in this movie, you know. Look. I, I liked her, again, I'm glad they did her justice and brought her back the right way in the last movie, but I, I'm i sorry, I just, Lori's story is not as appealing to me. I'm sorry, it's just true. It's just, I, how many fucking times do we have to see Lori Strode fight Michael Myers? And it's not this movie's fault or the movie before that's fault. It is the fault of Universal, of having... Uh, fucking nine other movies outside of John Carpenter's one in these these movies. Nine other movies where it's constantly brought up about Laurie and Michael and it's Laurie and Michael and Laurie and Michael. So when you add in, when you get a shot in the arm of Karen and her daughter and adding something new, I'm more excited about that. And it's nothing against Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis is amazing. I love Jamie Lee Curtis. But Laurie taking a back seat doesn't upset me as much as other people. It doesn't. 
But Karen and her daughter taking the back seat does a little bit because, yeah, the first movie, they did such a great job of making them characters that I give a shit about and making, you know, and, and again, you know, that first movie, it, it talks about themes of paranoia and delusions and, 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 and what happens when you think so, you know, someone in your family is like so far gone and all these things. I like that aspect to it. And I get why people would be upset, and I was a little bit too, that the Strode women kind of took a back seat. Had I had known that this movie would have been just a straight up Michael Myers revenge movie, maybe I would have felt a little bit different about it. Uh, so when Karen gets killed, I was shocked, because I honestly thought they were going to keep, because uh, my mind, I was thinking they were going to kill Lori, and then make, you know, pass the torch to the new ones, and the new Strode women. But that's not the case here. Karen is murdered by Michael at the end of this movie and that's also where we have Jamie Lee Curtis's long uh, monologue that was in the trailer um, that talks about Michael getting stronger with every kill and he's just evil incarnate and he's all you know these things coming at them and and it sets it up for the third movie and it sets him up him because he's looking out the window Laurie's looking out the window and it's like, boom, these two are going to collide in the third movie. And at that point, I was like, okay, fine. But I was also thinking, like, are we getting, again with fucking Laurie and Michael? Like, why is this the constant? Why is it always the constant that Laurie and Michael? Like, why couldn't it have been Laurie gets killed and it's the it's the daughter? Oh, God, I'm going to have to look this up because it's going to drive me crazy because this is not helping my point when I say, like, she's such a great character, but I don't remember her name. Yeah. That's what happens when you do a solo show, folks. It's it happens. Episode sixteen point nine. Uh, Allison, there we go. Allison, I thought they like. I thought the scene for me how I would have done the ending would have been Allison defeats Michael, or so she, or so we think, or whatever the fuck. And she is looking out the window and having a monologue while Michael is also looking out the window or something. Are you looking into the eyes of his mask or something? And you set that up instead of Laurie and Michael. Because it's been done so many times. And again, it's not this movie's fault. It's Universal's. And I'm clapping. And, you know, it's just... And I'm sure it'll be good. I'm sure I'll enjoy it. And I know, again, I'm in the minority that actually liked Halloween Kills. But uh, I'm sure it'll be good. And I'm sure I'll enjoy it. But it's just it's just something that I was like, ah, I don't know. That, that was one of the few things I didn't like. It was one of the things I'm like, ah. uh, but I, maybe it is because all signs pointed to her. Like you know, again before that sequence, we had uh, the fight where her Allison's boyfriend gets murdered, which was a surprise to me too. I didn't think they were gonna kill him. They kill his dad, then they kill him, and then. There's the big fight scene where he throws her down the stairs and she breaks her leg. And I was like, oh, my God, that's brutal. <laughs> it didn't show, like, the bone broke, uh, popping out, but it was the snap and her leg was, like, twisting. I was like, ugh, ugh, I hate that. Um, But I- I'm interested to see how they're going to do the Lori thing. Maybe they do kill Lori in the third movie and then Allison's the one who kills Michael. I feel like the only way to do this Halloween ends has to be with Michael and Lori killing each other. It's the only way that you can end that movie, I feel like, is they both kill each other. Uh, another thing I want to talk about, uh, spoiler-wise, that I'm upset about, and I touched on it a little bit ago, but the mob mentality storyline, I understand the point, and I know what they were trying to say in this movie, that when you get into a, a fervor of an angry mob, you lose sense of reason, you lose sense of intelligence it seems like at least in this movie and you're you 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 are so desperate for an outcome and you are so desperate to have what you want to happen you'll do something horrible and irrational and i get it it's an it's a relevant story for this time and it's a re- you know especially politically but it's also like okay but there's a sequence where they're all at the hospital cuz Lori's there and Lori's like, Michael will come to this hospital. He's coming for me. We need to prepare the hospital. And so the angry mob makes their way to the hospital after a few people have been killed. And uh, they, they're like, well, if Michael's coming here, we got to be ready. And blah, 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 blah. And it was, before that, we, we, we uh, catch up with Anthony Michael Hall's character, which in 
in the beginning of the movie, we get an extended flashback of uh, the son of a bitch. I keep doing that. I keep forgetting names. Uh, we, we get a flashback of the, the cop from the first movie, Will Patton, who is fantastic. I love Will Patton. We get a flashback of Officer Hawkins uh, in 1978. And he didn't get a chance to and uh, kill Michael Myers. And that whole storyline. We also meet a few new characters, I believe, that are uh, Tommy Doyle and uh, some other characters that we will meet through Lonnie, who I mentioned earlier, who is he's he's kind of getting bullied by the other kids, but they're out trick or treating, and this is around this is in 1978, so Michael's out, you know, killing people, and they're like, hey, the cop sees him, he's like, go back and lock your doors, and you know. Go home. Don't fuck with him. Because <laughs> uh, Michael Myers is out there. And we kind of build up that storyline of like, oh, these were kid- these were other kids that were out while this was happening. And then we have the storyline of uh, Officer Hawkins not being able to kill Michael Myers. He has a shot on him. His, his partner's getting strangled to death. And he shoots his partner instead of shooting Michael. Because um, he tensed up and he shoots the, the wrong... He shoots his partner on accident. And Michael gets away, but then they find all the cops find him uh, at the bottom of the stairs. Um, and I like that a lot because it adds so it adds more lore to Michael. And that's and I and I think the movie was smart to do that at the beginning because there it should tell you right there that this is a Michael Myers movie. This isn't a Laurie Strode movie because the first one was about Laurie and her family. This time it's about Michael because they set it all up about how these are the people that knew about Michael but survived and then we cut back to now present day and it's at a bar and uh, uh, Anthony Michael Hall's character Tommy Doyle is talking about hey we're the ones that survived Michael Myers and you know if he comes you know if the boogeyman comes back we'll be ready like we're gonna kill him kind of thing and as the movie progresses they get a news report that you know this unrelated Another inmate breaks out of uh, an asylum, but they talk about all the killings and all the murders, and so uh, they're already worked up in a fervor, and Tommy Doyle's already like, well, fucking, we're going to take care of business. (laughs) If if, if Michael shows up, we'll we'll get rid of him. We'll take care of him. So uh, later on, uh, this new couple that is uh, a, a doctor in a nurse costume uh, they're going into their car and his wife starts the car and she freaks out because after they see all this stuff in the news, everybody's like, okay, maybe we should fucking go home and lock the doors because these uh, police reports are happening on our streets. These are the neighbors' houses, you know, things like that. And again, they're covering the deaths of the first movie, which is, I think is a cool how seamless it's kind of tied into the, the, the other movie. So they're going home. Uh, they're getting ready to go home. His wife starts the car because uh, he had to, he forgot his fucking stethoscope for his uh, costume, which is like, who fucking cares, dude? Get a new stethoscope. We find out they actually work in a hospital, so you could get a new stethoscope. Uh, so they she goes to start the car, but then she freaks out because we just see a shape, and she's like, he's in there. Michael Miser's in there, and then he crashes his car after Anthony Michael Hall takes out this bat that's called Old Huckleberry, uh, and he's like gonna hit him with it, and. The car drives off, crashes, and uh, then we cut to we see it's the other person, another inmate from the asylum. And this is where I was like, oh, because I had heard about the kind of the mob mentality. I was like, but okay, so Tommy Doyle is going to be the new character that's going to lead the whole revolution, the whole mob to take out Michael. And okay, okay, and. It's funny because it starts with you start to like Tommy and you understand where he's going, but then as the movie goes along, you're like, dude, why the fuck? Okay, I get that you hate this guy, and I know that you don't want this man to keep haunting your town. He's been haunting your town for 40 years, and he's been he's back. He's brutally murdering everybody. I understand the logic of it, but it's like, why would you want to fuck with this dude who's like seven foot tall and clearly capable as fucking dudes up? Why would you bother with him? And you think you, Anthony Michael Hall, are going to go and beat him up with a baseball bat? Come on. Come on. But yeah. Uh, so eventually the mob goes to the hospital. We find the inmate that also escaped. But they even the news is like, I don't know. This could be unrelated. And by the way, the inmate is 
a shorter, pudgier guy who, if you think about, is not capable of doing the shit that Michael's doing. Because if you look at some of these deaths, it's like this would take a uh, very strong, big individual to do this shit. Now, of course, they have the hind- they don't have the hindsight I do as the viewer, as whatever. But if you look at that guy, and there's no way you look at that guy and be like, yeah, he's a vicious, murdering sociopath, right? <laughs> so as that's happening, Lori wakes up, Lori sticks some morphine in her. She's like, no, we got to handle it. We got to settle it. Her, uh, Karen's like, no, don't do that. You're fucking crazy again. Like, and she even says it in the movie, years of preparation and he still survived. We're fucked. You know, kind of thing. And so Lori sees it, sees this inmate at the hospital while this whole angry mob has overrun this hospital trying to kill this guy. And they keep shouting, evil dies tonight, evil dies tonight. And, and uh, Lori's like, that's not him. And because Lori actually, you know, in the first movie saw his face and she lifted up the mask. And so then uh, Karen takes it upon herself to try and save this guy. And she locks him in a hallway. So she locks the mob out of each side of the hallway, locks him in there. And she goes, it's not him. It's not him. And then he takes a fire extinguisher, breaks out the window and then jumps to his death. And then his body parts are all over him, whatever. And, it, and I, again, I understand the messaging. The messaging is if you do this, bad things will happen and people may die. If, if you know, if you go this mob mentality. Right. I get it. But it seems a little strange to be so heavy handed in a movie where I'm also watching a guy brutally murder other people. And it also, while I understand the logic of what they're trying to say here, it in a way kind of humanizes Michael Myers because you 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 see this angry mob and you don't really want to root for that angry mob but you also you shouldn't want to root for a serial killer you know what i mean and i think that is kind of a a, a weird uh paradox that kind of works with these movies because on one hand you we love watching these slasher movies because of all the creative ways we kill them but it's also at the same time it's like we can't idolize Jason Voorhees. We can't idolize Michael Myers because they're still brutally murdering people. And I guess, I don't know, for me, that just kind of put in this weird, like, moral uh, addition to the movie where it's like, I don't know if that's necessary. But I could be wrong. But it seems like I'm not in the minority on that criticism because I think most people uh, don't like it. Uh, another... I, I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon, but uh, before that, i got to give a shout-out to the characters Big John and Little John. They're a, uh, they're a gay couple that live in Michael Myers' old home, and uh, they they were just great. Um, son of a bitch. i got to do this again because I don't remember. I know one of them is Michael McDonald, who uh, I remember him from uh, Mad TV, and uh, he, do, he does a ton of bit work, and he's, he's, he's always great um, in, the, in, the things, in the movies that he's in. Uh, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to stall. I'm going to stall. I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. <sighs> I don't think I'm going to find it. I don't think... There's got to be in here. I'm on uh, Rotten Tomatoes trying to look at the cast. They've got to be in there. Wow, fuck you, Rotten Tomatoes. Where were you when I needed you most? I'm going to keep doing that. But Little John and uh, Big John are new characters that are just there to be fodder. Like, which is so funny because I was telling Ashley when we got out of the movie because I, I like how they set it up because they live in Michael Myers' childhood home and some kids are trying to prank them and steal their candy. And then the, the they they mess with the kids by saying, you know, like, you know who used to live here, dude? Michael Myers. Okay? And they still, you know, like he still calls out to us. So it's, it's, it's great. Um... And I like how they were introduced, but I remember telling Ashley, I go, you know what? I like these characters. They're going to fucking die. <laughs> it was, it was uh, to me, it was a for- foregone conclusion. And sure enough, they do get killed. But shout out to them. I think I think the um, the actors that were in it, and if I can get IMDB to fucking come up and help me, uh, I, I think that they did a great job of making me like them. And then I was sad when they were killed because... They were they were really killed. Scott MacArthur and Michael McDonald were uh, Big John and Little John, and they were great. And 
R.I.P. Big John and Little John. Uh, yeah, and I don't correct. Feel free to correct me if you if I'm wrong in this, but I don't remember before the DGG trilogy that Michael Myers used to display the bodies. I feel like that was something new for this series and I this franchise. And I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong there. Though I I do I do want to be clarified because as I said, I'm not a Halloween historian, so I don't I don't know if that's true or not. But yeah, they were displayed like they were in a loving picture. All right, P.P. John, little John. Part of me was hoping they would have made it out because I like them a lot. Uh, and I'm trying to think of things. Oh, just wrap it up. The third act of this movie. So the mob finally catches up to Michael Myers. And Ashley called it out when I was watching it. They all surround him and they're like, you know, it's all over here, Michael. And as these guys, all these people are, are surrounding him. Uh, Ashley goes, they're going to die. They're going to die. Because uh, keep in mind, before this, Karen shows up to save Allison, stabs Michael in the back with a pitchfork, stomps on him, doesn't quite kill him, then takes his mask to lure him into the mob. And it's also, I thought, another great, and somebody mentioned this on Twitter, and I noticed it too. It, he was still walking slowly and robotically, but there was still a pace of like Michael was pissed off because she took his mask. Like, I, and I liked that little subtle touch that was added to this. Um, so yeah, it, it was it was interesting uh, to to see that uh, transpire, and then the mob shows up and they beat him down and they're attacking him, and then that's when Lori does her monologue to end the movie, and then <laughs> somebody said full malignant, and I agree. <clears throat> and if you if you have seen *Malignant*, you know what I'm talking about. <clears throat> uh, he, Michael just straight up murders this whole entire mob. Even Tommy Doyle was like, maybe they'll save him for the third movie. No, everybody in that mob gets murdered. And also another point: everybody that led that crusade against Michael, what it would be Lonnie's the one of the characters from the the opening scene, uh, Lonnie or the two other women, and then Tommy Doyle. All murdered. Even the the husband and wife team, the new couple that we saw that were the, the doctor and the nurse, they get fucking murdered. Which, by the way, holy shit. So in this sequence, he's trying to kill, he's stabbing this one woman, and then the doctor like takes his stethoscope, which he had to go back and get, and choke out Michael. And Michael still has a knife in his hand, stabs him in the fucking eye with it. And it was such a brutal move, and like, I gotta give props to this movie because I I think they used a ton of practical effects and I think that's what made it more gruesome, and 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 like visually like oh, and then his wife comes up to try to shoot him. He literally hits her with a car door. She sh- shoots the gun up into her face and shoots herself in the head. I was like, ha, brilliant. Again, the kills are what you go to this movie for, and they fucking excelled in that. Also, Big John got his eyes popped out of his fucking skull. God damn this movie. I think I think this movie. S- saved itself in my eyes because of how creative and violent the kills were. I think that's what made me in- enjoy it. I don't know. Um, oh, like I said, uh, the non-spoiler things. Again, I still enjoy this movie. I un- and you know with the spoiler talk as I'm talking about it, I understand the criticisms. I agree. There's some things in this movie. I was like, really, what are we doing here? And yeah, the ending where he kills the mob, then shows up and kills Karen, and then stares at the window while Lori's staring at the 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 hospital room window. It's an okay ending. But I heard, and I don't know if this is true or not, I've heard a rumor, and it's going to be in the Blu-ray as an extended version, is that Lori calls Karen. Michael answers it, doesn't say anything, just <sighs> like breathes like that into the phone. So then Lori knows, oh, fuck, he killed Karen. I got to get this guy. I don't know if that's true or not. That's just an internet rumor. It might be on the extended version of the Blu-ray. If that was the case, why the hell wasn't that the original ending? Because that's a better ending. Come on. Come on, DGG. What are you doing? Regardless, did you see Halloween Kills this weekend? Did you like it? What did you think? Uh, I would love to know. Um, uh, you know, tell me how you feel about it. Um, I don't know how you tell me, but, uh, you know, speak into the ether. <laughs> I don't know. It's up to you. You know, and we all know the third one's coming. Are you excited for Halloween ends? I am. Because I want to know how they're going to try and wrap this thing up. And again, that's another criticism that I understand. This movie does sort of feel incomplete because you know there's a th- another one coming. 
And that's and that's the thing that sucks when these movies get announced ahead of time when you know there's going to be two movies. When you know there's going to be another one, you kind of tamper your expectations a little bit. And ideally, they should work as standalone movies. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, sorry, my mic got... I lost my cable there. Thanks so much for listening to uh, episode number 16.5 Halloween Kills Review. <laughs> I uh, hope you enjoyed this solo thing. I'm amazed that I talked for 40 minutes by myself. It's impressive. Um, yeah, so uh, be, we'll be back sometime this week for episode 17, number 17. That will be a full-fledged episode, and that will be covering all the DC fandom stuff because there's a lot to talk about, and Tyler will be joining me as well, so it won't be just me blabbering on for an hour or so. So, uh also, can we stop shooting it, shooing it, shoehorning in? Jesus Christ! Can we stop shoehorning in? Uh, it's Halloween. Everybody's how the one good scare. Come on, that was so unnecessary in that in that movie. I do like the the tease of the Halloween three masks when he he displayed the the couple the the doctor and the nurse couple and the other lady. He used the mask from uh, Halloween three, so that was pretty cool. And that's it.